All right, we are live. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Yunus Lari. I'm an attorney. Uh, I'm an alumna at Florida Coastal School of Law and admissions counselor in the Office of Admissions and your host for today's webinar. Before we go uh, any further, before we start, I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your busiest schedules to be with us today. Uh, these webinars have been growing in popularity and that encourages uh, my colleagues and me to up our games and keep bringing you the materials you want to hear and learn more about. So once again, thank you for your participation and let's begin. If you have law school application on your mind, by the time we are done with you today and with today's webinar, you will be very happy you joined us. Today, we're going to discuss all things, all things application, uh, from creating an account with LSAC.org, LSAC.org, to, obtain, uh, to obtaining letters of recommendation, writing your personal statement, and everything in between. And uh, to do so, we have the most qualified guest speakers for today's webinar. I'm excited to be joined by my brilliant colleagues in the Office of Admissions, uh, Mrs. Nicole Schumer and Mr. Tony Cardenas. Between them, they have over a couple decades of experience in the world of higher education in general and law school admissions in particular. First, we will uh, hear from Nicole, uh, who is our Assistant Director of Admissions, talk to us about the beginning of your application process and most common mistakes to avoid uh, in preparing uh, when you're preparing your application. Then we will have Tony, the Dean of Admissions himself, tell us about what he likes to see in a personal statement and in an application. Overall, uh, I know they both have prepared very uh, useful and interesting material for you guys. I hope you enjoy their presentations today as much as I enjoy working with them. As always, uh, you may use uh, the chatting box on uh, the left side of your screen uh, to type in your questions. Uh, I will type in uh, on that chatting box in a, in, in, a little, in a little bit. And I definitely encourage all of you to ask questions. Asking questions help tailoring these webinars to better fit your uh, needs. So please do ask questions. Now, without any further ado, I give you Miss Nicole Schumer. Nicole, it's all yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you for that, um, that nice welcome you gave us. Um, feel a little old with the whole 10 year decade thing, but that's okay. Um, welcome, everybody, uh, to our webinar, and I hope you get everything out of it that we want to show you. So, um, Eunice, if you want to put the presentation up. Hope everybody had a nice day and then having a nice evening so far. And again, thank you for joining us while we're loading this. We should be ready here in just a second. Okay. Um, this is, we're going to talk, talk about preparing your application. We'll go through different aspects of the application from where do you go to begin, um, what documents you're going to need, all that fun stuff. Um, and then when Tony gets on, he'll tell you how to make it shine. So, but first, you got to make sure you have everything. So, um, we're going to start with um, what we'll cover. We'll cover the LSCC website, um, the law school application um, portions, all the different parts of the application that you'll need. Um, then Florida Coastal School of Law's requirements and the submission of your application. We'll start with LSAC's website. It's called lsac.org is where you'll go and you'll want to set up an account. That'll be the first thing you'll do to get started through this whole application process. And if you see on the right hand corner of the website, you could that's where you go to start to create your account. Now, why would you want to create an account through LSAC? Because um, this is where it all happens. This is where you register for the LSAT. Um, most schools require an LSAT, so you want to make sure that you do that. There's, it's, it's done two, four times a year, uh, so there are information's on there, their deadlines and price and all that stuff to get you started on that. Um, once you've taken the LSAT, you'll be able to get your score online. Um, you can research all the law schools on their website. Uh, you can assemble all your documents, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but 
There's where you can put all your documents in one place, which is very convenient. Um, and tracking your law school applications. So you can kind of see what the status is with all your applications that you've started so far. So it can be very handy and it's also good. It will help you. They have a lot of information on there that can help you prep um, for the LSAT. They have um, they have some uh, some fake LSAT tests you can take. They have resources for you to go find. Um, so it's just a really great resource all the way around. So um, you'll get a lot of advantages from using it. Um, this is the different parts of the application that you have. Um, so it's not just, you know, the application where you put your name and phone number and, you know, your prior history and everything. There's a lot of aspects to, to your file. Um, so you have your writing sample, your LSAT score, your transcripts, your letters of recommendation or evaluation letters, and addendums and resumes and your personal statement. And some are housed with your CAS report, which I'll talk about in just a second, and some will be attached to your actual application that you fill out with the, each school. To get you a little bit about that, the Credential Assembly Service, this is what you will also do through LSAC. It's called your CAS report. It houses all your documents that the schools will need to be able to evaluate. So some of the things that are in there is your undergraduate transcript. This could include um, graduate professional, law school transcripts, any transcript that you can um, post-graduation from high school, if you went to, um, you will need to have that put in there. Um, your letters of recommendation and your evaluation occurrence, and then your LSAT score and your writing sample. Those are things that will be housed in this credential assembly service that you will have. Um, some other documents that you will need um, to have on file, if you have a state statement, any that you will need, that uh, important that you make sure your audience knows the message you're trying to deliver, and please proof a huge thing. You want to make sure you proofread all of your documents. Your typos and fine tooth comb. Um, part of law school is is attention to detail. So um, your resume essays and addendums and the application and fee. Those are what, what you, everything that you will need for, for a general application for law school. Every, every law school will have a little bit different requirements, but that's just generally what you will need um, to get the process started. Okay, for the coastal law application, to get be more specific, some things that we need are, are generally what, the, what everyone else needs, but just to kind of give you an, an idea, um, we require in the CAS report that you will have with LSAC, your LSAT score and your writing sample and then your undergraduate transcripts. And like I said, again, make sure um, it's all transcripts from any post I mean, undergraduate institution that you have attended. Um, make sure you have that um, graduate professional law school. And if you attended another law school before, make sure that you um, submit the law school transcript and your undergrad transcripts, and you'll need to get a letter of standing. Even if you just took that, you went to law school for one semester and went through, you will still need to get a letter of standing and a law school transcript if they have one for you. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, two letters of recommendation as well. Um, some schools do evaluations. We, we do the two letters of recommendation. Um, so just something to remember if you're, if you're out there getting them that we, we want the two letters of recommendation. Okay, so for the actual cost, coastal law application, um, which is separate from the CAS report. This is your application that you'll fill out. You will attach the following um, documents. You'll need your personal statement, which Tony will talk about more in detail and how to make that shine in here in a little bit. Your resume, any addendums that you may have, say you um, have a legal history or um, academic history or just some special circumstances you really wanna give us a little bit more detail about, that would be in your addendums. Um, and then our application is free um, through LSAC. You can either go to it, Get there through our website, which will lead you directly to the applications on LSAC's website, or you can go directly through LSAC. It makes no difference. It's free either way. Um, so uh, you can get there multiple ways, through our admissions area or through LSAC. Um, submitting your application, timing on your application. We are fortunate that we have rolling admission. Some schools have a certain deadline. They have other applications, but we have rolling admission, which means we are making decisions all the time, and there is no certain set deadline for our applications. But I will recommend that you get your application in as soon as you can and as early as possible so that you can ensure that you'll um, there will be a seat in the class for you and that you'll take advantage of any scholarship opportunities we have. Um, uh, the earlier you do that, the, the more opportunities we have available. So something to keep in mind. 
if you're trying to figure out when you want to apply and what term you want to apply for, the earlier the better. Um, and for applications that you can apply for, we have three start start dates. We have a spring, a summer, and a fall. Um, all of these are already available on our website. We have our summer and fall to summer and fall 2017, and our spring 2018 is already live as well. Um, with the spring, it starts in January. It also has two programs. It offers a M and a and a regular JD program. So that's it's that's a, a different than the rest of the semesters. Um, and uh, we have smaller we have a smaller entering class for spring, um, and you must attend in the summer during your first semester, which is a good thing because it kind of catches you up with the prior fall class. So you're not quite as you're not that far behind the previous fall class, which is pretty awesome. Um, and for summer, the summer starts in May. It's a small entering class as well. And the great thing about summer is it's a gradual start to law school. So you kind of you take two classes in the summer. You kind of get your feet wet. You kind of see what it's all about. Um, get that law school experience without having to dive into a full course load that you would in the fall or, or spring. So that's a nice benefit if you want to start in the summer. Um, then we have our fall semester. It starts in August. It's our largest entering class. It's a full time or part time options are available for that as well. Um, I see we have a question, please. Can the letters of recommendation come from former employees, schools, or professors? Those are the great, those are the best um, letters of recommendation to have. I will be getting to a slide on that in just a second. But yes, um, you don't want them to come from friends or family. But again, I'll, let me, I'll touch on that in just a second. But good question. If a previous submitted an application, can I use the same file or do I need to ask for recommenders to update them? It depends on how old they are um, and if... Uh, if your CAS report is still available, but you should be able to use them again if you if you choose to. Sometimes it's nice to revamp them, though, especially if we remember your application. If you're getting a new letter of recommendation, um, can freshen your application. So if you can, try to get a new one, but you can use the old ones if, if you choose to. Okay, um, and before I give you over to Tony to show you how to make your Rockstar application, I want to give you five quick don'ts for your law application. Um, one, starting with your letter of recommendation which we just spoke about. Um, please do not have them coming from your family um, uh, or aunts or uncles or, or, or family friends that you've known for a long time. You really want it to be a professional recommendation. So for professors or supervisors or people that have worked with you in a professional setting and know your work ethic, and, and even better if you can get a recommendation from a uh, someone in the legal profession who has been through law school, who knows the rigors of law school and how difficult it can be, and they have given their seal of approval that you can handle that. That's always even more stellar. So if you have the opportunity to do that, uh, I would recommend that. And then one of the my biggest advice on this is please make sure that the people who you're getting recommendations from are going to give you good recommendations. Because believe it or not, sometimes we get applications from people who got letter, letters of recommendation aren't all that stellar. Um, so make sure they're going to make you shine and they're going to get you as great as possible. Um, number two, do not mention another law school in your application or in your personal statements. Um, that can be, you know, on accident a lot of times if people use their same personal statement for multiple schools. Try not to do that. We want to know that you've taken the time to, to apply to a relationship with you that we are trying to grow. Um, so if you can, every school deserves to have that opportunity to have that application relationship with you and, and the please try to remember to not mention other schools, even though we know you're applying to other schools and that's totally very common and not unusual. But uh, we want to know that we have a relationship with you um, and that you're you're focused on us when you're applying. Um, number three, uh, do not start your personal statement with a famous quote. That is just kind of an example, but um, we want to hear your voice. We, wanna, we don't want to hear um, from other people that are, that are great or, or, or previous famous people. We want to hear from you. This is your personal statement. So we want to hear from you. And Tony will get into this in a little more detail, but just wanted to put that out there that this is your time to shine in, in, in your letter. So make it about you and how you shine and how amazing you are. And number four, not showing us your passion for your law, for law school. Make sure somewhere in your personal statement, your resume, somewhere where your passion began and what but because law school is it takes a lot of energy and you have to be very devoted and it's a lot it's very time consuming and so we want to see that you have um a passion for law school not just read off of a resume of okay 
Okay, I think I might have lost my microphone for a minute, so I'm not sure where you guys, what you guys heard. Um, but we'll go on to the next slide. If you have any questions or anything you missed, put it in the chat box and I'll be glad to go over it again. Number five, do not uh, adequate research, please do enough adequate research for your for your application. Um, have you visited the school, um, talked to students and recent graduates, um, reviewed their faculty and curriculum? Um, when you do those things and you've done the research on the schools, um, you come to us with better questions, really in-depth questions, questions that are gonna help you make that right decision. So I encourage you to do the research and 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 it's it's a big commitment for you too. It's, three, you know, you have a some, some time commitment and money commitment, do the research and come with the good questions. They will only in the long run help you make the best decision for you and the great best fit for you. So um, does anybody have any questions regarding the, the process, uh, documents, anything that I can answer for you? Okay, well, if you don't have any questions, I'm gonna be here throughout the thing if questions come up, um, but I'll turn it back over to you, Eunice. Thank you very much, Nicole. Um, that was extremely helpful and uh, and interesting. All right, uh, looks like we have another question before I throw it to Tony. Uh, Kerry Brown is asking, can we get presentation by email? Um, I let Tony answer that question uh, because it's uh, it's his time to uh, to come back on. Um, now I give you the Dean of Admission of Florida Coastal School of Law, Mr. Tony Cardenas. Tony, it's all yours. Eunice, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for such a brilliant introduction. I hope I can live up to all of the hype. I hope I can answer everybody's questions tonight. I'm excited to be here with everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your evening to join us. We hope we can give you some useful information tonight. And we're going to go over a lot of different aspects of, uh, actually, we're going to go over uh, some uh, aspects of the application process that kind of go or get, you know, our afterthoughts sometimes or get, you know, pushed off to the side and aren't done. And and I, I want to emphasize that, that they, they are important and we're going to get into that today. Uh, Carrie, you asked a great uh, question. Can we get the presentation by email? Uh, because you asked, yes, 100%. We will definitely make sure that you can get a copy of each of these presentations, each of these slide decks. Uh, we'll get those to you tomorrow. So I will ask Eunice to make a note. Uh, if anybody else would like uh, a copy of, of these presentations, let us know. Um, we're here. We're here to help educate you. And uh, so many times we're, we're told as admissions people, oh, hey, you're a salesperson. You got to act like you're in sales. But it's not sales for us. For us, it's just trying to counsel, give information, uh, and, and help educate each of our students through this process. I come from the uh, undergraduate world, I, um, I work, this is my 21st year in higher education and in enrollment management. And I've talked to lots of students over that time, but I think what I try to do is I, I try to make sure that we're going to make the right fit, uh, whether it's undergraduate or if it's law school. And we're going to talk about fit tonight. Uh, today, I'm going to also talk about the personal statement. I'm going to talk about letters of reference. Um, and all of that fun stuff that goes into supporting that application and that process. But the one thing I have noticed in my five years in law school admissions is that the application process is not easy sometimes. Uh, the law school admissions council makes us go through and jump through a lot of hoops, but we want to make sure we've got all our documentation. They do a wonderful job of putting all that paperwork together for us and making sure that we can get a decision to you quickly. So I thought Nicole did a great job of explaining LSAC, uh, the Law School Admissions Council, who they are, what they are, and the role they play. So what I'd like to do now is uh, kind of jump into my presentation. And the first thing that I would like to talk about is going to be the personal statement. So first things first, let's talk about this. The personal statement process is usually the most time-consuming part of the application, and it does deserve the most attention. We learn so much from the personal statement that you're going to add in your application for admission. I read every personal statement that is submitted to Florida Coastal for every admitted student at Florida Coastal School of Law. And when you get your acceptance letter, and this is a little hint, um, when you get your acceptance letter, you'll know. You'll know that I've read your letter. 
but I'm not going to tell you. So hopefully you'll get accepted and you'll be able to know why or how I read every single one of these personal statements. Uh, number two, law schools really do read your essays. Uh, some law schools, including Florida Coastal, will have two, three, or four staff members read your personal statement. Uh, we think that is important. We think that you put the time into it. We, we want to know who you are, and we can get a great feel of who you are from that statement. Your personal statement will be discussed at length by a group of admissions people in a committee meeting, uh, just like in the movies. Uh, anytime you've seen, uh, I think there's a great um, movie with Tina Fey, and you're going to see some photos of that or included later in my presentation called um, Admissions. Um, we do read. Um, we do read all of these. We read these together, and we help discuss the students. And there are times where these supporting documents can be a difference maker. Obviously, we're looking at your LSAT scores. We're looking at your undergraduate GPA. We're looking at your major, the school you attended, the classes you took, academic rigor. The whole academic record is so important in this process. But if we're separating students, one student from another student, is there a difference maker? Is it the resume? Is it the personal statement? Um, it can be a difference maker in this process. So I, I, I'm going to give you some tips now uh, on, uh, on your writing your personal statement. So we'll go to the next slide. And so here are six strategies for excellent essays. So number one, watch your structure, your grammar, and your spelling. You make sure that your ideas are getting across. The one thing we don't want to see, uh, we, and we do see this sometimes, actually, are our misspelled words, the overuse of commas, uh, the misuse of the semicolon or the ellipse. I, there, there's a lot of grammar out there. I believe there's seven or eight different forms of grammar uh, or punctuation that you can use in a sentence, and we've seen it all. I've seen it all, and the misuse of a comma can make a sentence sound completely different than what it should. So proofread, proofread, proofread. Have an English professor read it. Have your mother read it. Somebody get another set of eyes on that bad boy before it goes out, because I know even before I'll send emails out, I have my staff proofread them several times, and we can still not catch anything to the very end. Um, how long can the personal statement be? That is a great question. Um, usually about 250 to 300 words, so about uh, one to two pages uh, in length is usually good. You don't want to really get over that because um, sometimes we'll actually outline, we'll say we want it specifically within this, this framework so we can read through all of the uh, personal statements. And so, yeah, just be aware of that. Uh, some schools are different. Every school is different, actually, so they could tell you, oh, you know, it's, you can write as much as you want. I've received essays. I've received some that have been two paragraphs. I've seen. I've received some that have been ten pages. Uh, so each has their own virtues. But yeah, just be aware of the length. Uh, number two, share the good and share the bad. Uh, it's it's good to know that you know there's there everybody's sensitive in their own way. They've had different difficulties in their lives. Um, you're not going to be dinged on a personal statement if you're writing about. Uh, something uh, so I've had people write about tragedies in their lives and how they've overcome them. I've read, it, it's amazing, and I'm going to be a little open and honest here with you. I've read some uh, some personal statements that I have, I've broken down and cried uh, because they've been so intense uh, and what the uh, applicant had been through and overcome, it was, it was very moving. They were very open and honest uh, with the admissions committee. I've also had some where I have laughed nonstop because they were so funny. And the student uh, was absolutely amazing. And the way that the uh, personal statement was written was absolutely phenomenal. And I'm, I'm sure this person is probably writing for Saturday Night Live or Jimmy Kimmel or somebody like that right now because that, that one will always, that one stored up here uh, as an absolutely amazing uh, personal statement. Um, right from the heart. Uh, it's, you know, tell me how you felt in a particular situation or, you know, it, it could be about making a move or getting out of your comfort zone, uh, which, uh, you know, is, is a good thing for us to know that you can't be out of your comfort zone because law school is pretty much about you being out of your comfort zone. Law school is nothing like undergraduate. So you are going to be out of your comfort zone from day one. And we're going to take you that we're going to we're going to take you there on purpose because, a comfort zone is a dry, barren land where nothing grows. And we're going to take you out of that. 
We're going to put you into an environment where you're going to grow from the very first day in your 1L year to the day you graduate in your 3L year. And that's our promise to you is that you want to go to a law school that's going to change who you are. And that's what we are at Florida Coastal. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, make make the most of uh, the space you have and stay within the word limits. Uh, it tells us you can read directions. Uh, you take direction well, and um, and then we're not there uh, reading it all night, but we're getting a good grasp of who you are, and you can keep it in that time in that frame. That's that's great. I'll let your uh, preliminary readers read, but not rewrite. I know I mentioned having uh, your English professor read. Uh, your your essay or your personal statement. But don't forget your English professor is not the one that's going to be reading your application or that personal statement for admission to law school. So keep it in your own voice. Keep it yours. And do not believe the hype that only highly unusual essays are read. And this one's a little bit different, but I've had some people that have submitted essays on the back of a photograph. Or I've had some people who have submitted a drawing with their with their essay. No, it doesn't need to be unusual. You don't need to, you don't need to go on in this in this uh, conscious train of thought and just keep writing or anything like that. Um, you know, just you know, let get across uh, what we're what we're looking for and what we're asking for uh, in the essay. So, so Tony's rules for making your personal statement real. Uh, and authentic. Uh, don't waste your time wondering what law schools want to see in your personal statement. Uh, you'll be stuck there all day. And that's why this one kind of tends to be a little bit longer in the process. People are like, what do they want to hear? Oh my gosh, I don't know what to write. I tried writing it three or four times. I finally came up with this. No, don't do that. Ask yourself, what is it about me that I want the law school to know? People talk about their families, where they grew up, if they immigrated to the United States. Um, and what, what was it like to be uh, an aeronautical engineer at MIT, the pressures that they were under throughout their lives, the different things that they had been through, the good and the bad. Yeah, ask yourself, what do you want us to know? And like I also said before, don't try to be anybody else in your essay. Be yourself. We're going to know because we're going to see we're going to see your resume. We're going to see your writing sample from the LSAT. We're going to see all of that stuff. Just be yourself in this process. And that, that's kind of the best advice for making it real and authentic. So let's say you get uh, a question, and this one's pretty common. And, you know, tell us something about yourself. Uh, talk about open-ended. Um, when you get this question, and I think this is kind of like ours, you know, choose choose a single aspect about yourself, your background, your family, your activities or accomplishments, something that you want to focus on. Don't try to tell the committee everything there is to know about you in 300 words. It can be done. I've read it. It doesn't work. Um, in fact, it, it's kind of messy. So don't go there. That if that if you take anything from that, don't try to tell me your entire life in 300 words because you you can't do it. Uh, you're great people. You, nobody can write about themselves in just 300 words because you'll be amazed because you'll be at 900 words within the first 20 minutes and you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to take me forever to cut this down. You guys just continue being awesome. Focus on the most awesome part of that and go with that. And um, you want your personal statement to be unforgettable for good reasons. Uh, I've read, like I said before, ones that have made me laugh, ones that have made me cry. Those are good reasons. Those were students that I was like, wow, you are going to be a great fit at Florida Coastal. You are going to be an amazing lawyer one day. Whether you come to Florida Coastal or if you go to Harvard or if you go to Vanderbilt or if you go to Stanford, hey, you're going you're gonna to do something. You're really going to hit this thing out of the park. You're an amazing person. Don't stop what you're doing. Keep it up. You're amazing. And that's what I love reading in a personal statement. I know I'm setting the bar high for everybody, but it'll come to you. It'll be real, and you'll know. You'll know. So what not to do, and I, I liked a lot of the things that Nicole said. So don't focus on your weaknesses in your personal statement. That's not good. That is not good. I'm really bad at this. And then write 300 words or 500 words on what you're really bad at. No, I don't want to see that. Uh, don't use cliches, slang, or contradictions. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry contractions. Really, really bad. Uh, avoid controversial issues. You don't know who's reading that, uh, that personal statement. So stay away from anything controversial. Do not reiterate your academic accomplishments. I've read them. 
already. I've read them already. They are in your resume. They are on your transcripts. Uh, they are in your LORs from your professors. I don't need to read that again. Uh, and do not solely rely on your spell checker. I know I mentioned that uh, one simple comma being out of place can change the, the an entire sentence. Well, using R or R or in the wrong spot can also be really, really bad, and the spell checker is not going to catch it then and then. Um, it, it's really gonna, it can really derail a really strong personal statement. And we can overlook one maybe if we're lucky, but yeah, if it keeps happening, we've got a problem. So be aware of that. And telling jokes. Now, when I said that, that it was funny, that personal statement was funny, it was funny because of the stories they were telling, but they weren't telling jokes. And sometimes jokes can be a little controversial. Uh, you don't know the other person who's reading. And we've seen some pretty bad jokes come through, believe it or not. Uh, and some people aren't as funny as they think they are. Uh, so be careful with that. Yeah, we're telling jokes in the middle of your personal statement, not something that I would uh, particularly recommend at that time. So top five mistakes. And for me, these are like fingers down the chalkboard. Okay, so here's my top five. Number one, open with a quote. Nicole spoke to that. I know every quote from Martin Luther King, JFK, Jesus, you name it. I have read the quote at the beginning of a personal statement. They're all incredible leaders. They are all incredible people. They should all be quoted. But I, like Nicole said, I agree with her. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice from the very beginning. Talk to me. If you want to use a quote later on, drop it in the middle uh, of, the, of the personal statement. Do it, uh, especially if it fits in there. Hey, that, if that's going to be a quote that's going to really bring home a point and you think it's extra powerful and it fits in there, you are a rock star and I want you, I want you to do it. Get that quote in there. That's good. Watch the spelling and grammatical errors. Uh, sending a personal statement that mentions another law school. So this is, the, I love this ending. So this is why I think I would be a great candidate at Harvard University. Well, we're not Harvard University, and you must have sent this to Harvard University, but um, all you need to do is change that to Florida Coastal. It happens more than you think. It really does. So definitely, definitely, definitely make sure you don't mention it in the school. Summarizing your resume. I got your resume. I can read your resume. Don't do that. And focusing on your weaknesses again, like I said before. So hopefully I'm really getting these in there, really getting these across. So just, you know, if you could stay away from that, then that would be awesome. So those are all of my comments right now on the personal statements. Um, we will be getting a copy. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Eunice send one out to everybody if we can. And um, in an email tomorrow. And uh, we will go into letters of reference. And for me, this seems to be the one area, the most forgotten area on the application. So here's Tony's advice for LORs. Don't have your mom, your dad, your brother, your uncle, or your aunt write your LOR unless one of them is the president of the United States. All right, I'll take it then. That's great. Do it. Go ahead. But otherwise, I do not want to hear from a family member. Your family members think you're wonderful. That's their job. They've known you your whole life. They think you're the greatest thing. Yes, they should. They give you big hugs at Christmas. They don't need to like write your letter of reference. So <clears throat> be, be aware of that. Antidotes, not adjectives. We're going to be looking for examples of how wonderful you are in the letter by the stories people tell about you. Uh, Jose was great because Jose led uh, this committee in the class. He was uh, the lead presenter in this program. He, it was, he was the best over this entire academic year. First class, aces across the board. He did this, he did this, he did that. Wonderful student. I highly, strongly recommend him for your law school. Instead of Jose was a great student. He came to class. He was he was attentive, and uh, he listened, and he didn't miss class ever. Well, well, that's great, but that doesn't tell me a lot about Jose. So, ask you know, make sure that there are a lot of anecdotes, and there's somebody who really knows you. They can speak to you, can write an anecdote about you, tell a story about you, how you took on a project, how you took the lead, uh, what you know, your learning style. All of that kind of stuff, that can come out in an LOR and be a difference maker in your application. Make sure that they think you're great, okay? 
I tell my eighth grader, my eighth grader right now is putting together a database. He doesn't call it a database. I call it a database. But we're putting together a list of personal references because he has got a dream of working at the Publix grocery store down the street from our house. I said, put together your list of references. Who can you talk to? Who are the teachers that can write you a reference? Who are the teachers that know you? I have them thinking about that now in eighth grade. There are seasoned professionals out there right now that don't keep good lists of references. Do it now. Start putting that list together up here in your brain. Start getting it down on a piece of paper. Start writing down who. Ask them. Ask them with plenty of time. Give them plenty of time to prepare it. Um, Talk to them. Say, hey, look, I'm thinking I'm considering law school this year. I'm considering law school next year. Could you write me or do you feel comfortable writing me a letter of reference? There will some there might be some people that tell you no. Good to know now. Believe me, I have letters of reference that said, I wouldn't recommend this guy to wash my car. I wouldn't recommend this guy to go anywhere for law school. And the jaws drop, and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe somebody would write something like this. It happens. I'm sure it won't happen to you. Because you're going to take my advice and you're going to talk to that person. You're going to set them up and say, hey, look, going to need some, need some backup on this. And go to your favorite professors, somebody who sees you in the hallway, somebody who knows you by name, somebody you can talk to, professors. Um, so, uh, and this is the next thing, professors, coaches, supervisors, anybody who can, can and will speak to your awesomeness carries weight with me. Somebody who knows you, not somebody who says, oh, yeah, this person was in my class. They got a B plus. They're really, really good. I thought they were really great. No, doesn't tell me anything. Also, don't give me a letter of reference. That's one paragraph long. They've got to be able to write about you. I want them gushing about you. And <clears throat> there will be some admissions offices that say, hey, I don't want, I don't care about letters of reference. Uh, some will say we need zero. Some will say we need one. Florida Coastal, we're going to ask for two letters of reference. Some of them, like I mentioned, the personal statements before. Some of them, I, I've, I've received letters of reference from the White House. Not the president yet. Maybe one of you guys could pull that off. That'd be great. But I did get one from uh, from an employee, uh, actually the event coordinator, the international event coordinator at the White House wrote a letter of reference for one of our students. Uh, state senators, uh, senators, congressmen, congresswomen, all have written letters of reference uh, for students. Uh, I'm really, really strong, uh, famous people. We receive them from famous people. Uh, so, you know, as long as they know you and can speak to you, that's that's what we're looking for. So be aware, put some effort into those letters of reference. They could be a deal changer or a deal maker for you. So now let's talk about law school fit. I get this one a lot. It's almost like a Dear Tony email. I get it about three or four times a week. Should I choose a big name school or a best fit school? Should I go by what US News and World Report is ranking this year? Or should I go by uh, what my pre-law advisor is telling me? How do I go about finding the right fit and the best fit for me? Well, I took this one and, and this, as you can see below, I've got a scale here. If you're looking at school for name or you're looking for a school for the best fit on the left you've got the name or the prestige of a college uh, is most important in my in my college search so is it being is it finding and getting going to the highest ranked law school i can find which by the way um u.s news and world report has ranked albuquerque new mexico as the number one place to live i'm sure albuquerque is a great place to live i'm not going to move there because albuquerque is far away from where I live and my family, and I don't feel like following U.S. News and World Report's advice on that right now. And that's why I don't think you should follow the advice of U.S. News and World Report solely either. Take You can take that as in as one of your considerations. It's going to give you some insight into some different schools, but just because Harvard or Yale is ranked number one should not be the reason why you go there. You've got to make sure you're a good fit. So that gets us to the other side of that table, the fit of the college, <clears throat> social and academic atmosphere, size uh, is most important in my college search. Students looking for a school that is a good match look at all the factors and the qualities that go that a college or a law school possesses. 
So that's just kind of something to think about now. You know, what type of school do I want to be in? What type of people do I want to be in? So what are some of those qualities? What are the qualities that you could be looking for in a law school? Number one, size. How big is the law school? Does it have 300 people? Does it have 500 people? Does it have 1,000 people? Is it huge? Is it small? Am I going to get personal attention that goes along with all of that? Where is the law school located? There are 206 law schools in the United States, and those 206 law schools are located across the beautiful United States. There could be one in Albuquerque. I'm not sure. But there are rural rural uh, law schools. There are law schools in big cities like NYU, obviously. We're located in Jacksonville. We're the only law school located in Northeast Florida or Jacksonville, Florida, which happens to be the largest landmass city in the United States. We also have great weather here, but we can talk about that later. Academic environment, what type of uh, students, what type of uh, academic offerings are there? What type of clinics are there uh, to be a part of? What type of internships, externships? What type of professors am I going to be working with? <clears throat> that kind of leads into certificate and academic offerings. We offer all types of certificates from family law to immigration law to business law. The list goes on and on. Can I get that specialty here? Can I get something in sports law? Yes, you can do that. It's, a, it's under our business law certificate. We have one of the top sports law programs in the country. We have one of the top public interest law programs in the nation. We're known for that. That's fit. If you think that the area of, you know, that you're thinking about maybe practicing falls into something like that, call us. Talk to us. Interested in immigration law? We're amazing at immigration law and some of the things that we do. So take a look at that. Cost. What's it going to cost me to go to law school? I know you guys are all thinking, Tony, you're a private. Yeah, I know you're going to cost me more. We are going to cost you more. I'm not going to lie to you. We are going to be a little bit more expensive, but what's the value added? What are you going to get at Florida Coastal? What type of scholarship are you going to get at Florida Coastal to change that and to help bring that cost down? And what is it going to cost you to attend here? And how much money are you going to make after you graduate? All very important right now. So something to kind of think about. Some other things, diversity, very important in this too. Are the professors that I'm going to see, do they, do they look like me? Are there brown faces, yellow faces, black faces? Are those faces in the audience? Are they there? Are they in the classroom? Are they sitting next to me? Are they looking at me from up in front of the classroom? Am I going to feel at home at this law school? Student life. What's there to do on campus outside of the classroom? The people am I going to meet? We have students from all 50 states, 13 foreign countries at Florida Coastal. You're going to meet a lot of different people. There's a lot of stuff going on, not only on campus. Actually, there was a big, giant student carnival today, which took me by surprise a little bit. But the students were out there blowing off steam, having fun. The food trucks have been out this week. It's been amazing. It helps when the temperature is 81, 85 degrees outside. Everybody's outside enjoying it, getting fresh air. We also have a tradition at Florida Coastal called Hot Dog Wednesdays. Um, I kind of laughed at this at first, but this has been going on for a very, very long time, sponsored by all the different departments on campus. You got to come down. You got to have a special Florida Coastal hot dog on Hot Dog Wednesday. Uh, superior professors. Our professors are amazing. They rock. They are the coolest. Believe me. You're going to want to talk to Tony Kolink. You're going to want to talk to Erica Curran, who's our expert on immigration law. Tony Kolink is from JAG. Uh, Air Force JAG, he's a constitutional law professor. Uh, our dean, Dean DeVito, taught contracts. Amazing, amazing people being published every day. Eric Hall, in environmental law, does the largest environmental law uh, summit in the Southeast. Just amazing people that you're going to be interacting with on a daily basis. What type of other activities? Moot court. I don't know if you saw it. We have the number three moot court team of the decade. Out of 206 law schools, we're number three. We're number three. We are awesome in that area. We crush people. We crush everybody from Harvard to Vanderbilt to Yale. We take them all down. So remember that. And fitting in and being comfortable. When you visit campus, am I comfortable here? Was I comfortable listening to Tony on this podcast and listening to Nicole and to Eunice? You know, what do, do I feel comfortable interacting and talking to Tony? Uh, can I email or call the dean anytime? Yes, you can call the dean of admissions anytime you want. We'll call you back if I'm not there, but want to talk to you. So hopefully you're fitting in and you're feeling comfortable. So those are all, 
all of my my tips for kind of the uh, other areas of the application, LORs, personal statements, and, and making a good fit. I invite everybody, everybody, you're getting a personal invitation from me right now that if you want to talk about fit, call my office. My number, 904-256-1231. My information is out on the website, fcsl.edu under admissions. You guys can call me tomorrow. You can call me next week, whenever you want, but we can talk about fit. My promise to you is I'm going to tell you if you're a good fit or not for Florida Coastal. Now, not all law schools will do that. Okay. I'm going to tell you if, yeah, if you're looking to make a million dollars straight out of law school and you want to study space law, we're probably not your law school, which by the way, there are classes on space law. I didn't make that up. So if you want space law, we're not a good fit for you. But I can actually tell you two or three law schools that actually do have space law, and we can get you in touch with them. But, hey, if you're looking for immigration law, if you're looking for something in public service, if you're looking to work with Roger Groves, who has worked with Barry Sanders and Aretha Franklin and is in entertainment law and and loves sports law and puts on the largest sports law institute in the country, yeah, you could be a good fit for us. You could be a good fit for Florida Coastal and someplace you could see yourself spending the next three years. So that is something that I invite you to do. It's going to take your whole game when it comes to choosing a law school and getting through this process to another level. Okay. There are going to be people that come across, oh, I'm going to this law school. I'm going to this law. Ask them why. Ask them why. Get feedback from them. They could give you insights, but ask them why they're going there. Can they give you a good reason? If they tell you, oh, it's the highest ranked law school I got into, it's not a good reason. It's not. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to say that right now. That is not a good reason for choosing a law school. You can say, I did use the rankings. I felt was part of my process, but I also talked to the dean of admissions. He picked up the phone. We chatted and we talked about fit. And that's going to, like I said, take it to a whole nother level. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Eunice. If there are any other questions, shoot them over there and into the uh, chat bar. And if there's anything else I can answer for you guys, I will do that. You have been an incredible audience. You guys have been awesome. Thank you. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I am jazzed. Uh, I told you what did I tell you from the from the top that if you have applicant law application, law school application rather, on your mind, you wouldn't want to miss this webinar. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that would conclude uh, yet another episode of our webinar highlight series. We hope that you found that information helpful. Uh, I will pe personally make sure that all of you who attended our uh, webinar today receive a copy of today's presentations. Uh, fear not, you will receive a copy definitely. Once again, I want to thank each and every single one of you for joining us. And uh, interesting fact, not a single one of you left during the entire duration. That's awesome. That makes us happy. That is very good to see. Uh, th and a special thanks again to my guest speakers, Nicole, Tony. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for doing this. And as always, please don't hesitate to contact us with your questions, but also with your suggestions and comments on these webinars and how we can improve them. Like Tony said, we are here to educate and we want to make sure to do it in a way that you find most effective. Uh, please, please keep an eye out for our, our upcoming webinars and have a great rest of your evening. Uh, from myself and all my teammates in the Office of Admissions of Florida Coastal School of Law. Have a great night and goodbye.